<laughs> Alright guys, um, hope everybody's doing well. In this video, um, we're going to take our the idea we talked about in the last video with jelly beans and we're going to extrapolate that and we're going to talk about atoms in, in that same vein. So, first of all, let's look at a chemical reaction. This is one um, that is the burning of carbon. So this is a, well here, I'll actually ask you to tell me what kind of reaction is this. So we've got carbon solid, so that could be charcoal briquette, briquettes are carbon. Uh, a piece of wood is mostly carbon. Um, so first, let's review here. We've got CO2, or we've got carbon plus oxygen forming CO2. What type of reaction, how many um, types could you, you give this? Well, first, obviously, this is an electro, uh, oxidation reduction reaction. You have two elements that have zero charge. Um, their charge number is zero and they form a compound where they now both have charges so it's oxidation reduction and you could also call it a combustion reaction because oxygen is a reactant now there is no water formed because there's no hydrogen but um, under the classification system uh, the most proper answer would be uh, oxidation reduction so what's this rea what does this sentence tell us this chemical equation this chemical sentence what does it tell us well it's telling us a couple things. We could read this several ways. We could read it. One way we could read it is that one atom of carbon plus one molecule of oxygen form one molecule of CO2. And how do I know it's one and one one? Well, again, the prefix... Sorry, not the prefix. The coefficient in front of each symbol is one. So we can say this is one atom plus one molecule forms one molecule of carbon dioxide. But the problem with atoms is that they're very, very tiny. I am the world's one of the world's biggest atoms, um, but most atoms, the atoms that make you and I up, are extremely small. In fact, one carbon atom. If you were to put it on a, a balance, on a scale, one carbon atom would have a mass of 1.99 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams. That is so small, that is so small, that it would take about the same number of carbon atoms as there are stars in the universe to make a pile of carbon that would fit in your hand. Think about that for a second. So one atom is so small that it would take about the same number as the number of stars in the universe. Not just the galaxy. The galaxy has billions of stars. And there are billions of galaxies. That's a lot of atoms. So because they're so small, chemists have come up with a way to refer to their mass without using these exponents. Nobody wants to write times 10 to the negative 23 every time. So for chemistry, they have defined something called an atomic mass unit. Atomic mass unit, and it is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. So this is an important uh, number to remember. I'll put a little box around it. So if we were to look at a carbon atom, which has a mass of 1.99, excuse me, my voice is cracking, times 10 to the negative, times 10 to the negative, 23 grams. That's one carbon atom. And if we divide it by... 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24 grams per amu. This gives us an interesting number. This gives us a number 12.018 whoops amus. So don't need to pluralize that. So that's what a carbon atom has a mass of.
one carbon atom has a mass of 12.01 AMUs. And you might wonder, why is it, how can an atom have a mass of 12.01? Why isn't it a whole number? Well, the reason is because, just like the jelly beans, all jelly beans have a slightly different mass, and if we average those masses together, we might get an average that's not a whole number. And all carbon atoms have different isotopes. Well, sorry. All, there are several different isotopes of carbon atoms. For example, there is carbon-12, there is carbon-13, and there is carbon-14. Carbon-14. So these isotopes all occur, but they occur in different amounts. 98% give or take, 1% give or take, and 1% give and take. So that averages out to a ma uh, an average mass of 12.01 AMUs. Okay, so you might notice if you look on the periodic table underneath carbon, it has its atomic mass, and we now finally can start working with this number. The 12.01 that's underneath carbon is its mass in AMUs. So for example, if I had two carbon atoms, right, two carbon atoms, they would have a mass of 24.02 AMUs. Okay, so now, here's a typical problem. Let's say we had 75 aluminum atoms. Okay, what is the mass? So how many AMUs? Well, you look on the periodic table and you will see for aluminum that its atomic mass is 26 0.98. So that means one carbon or one aluminum atom has a mass of 26.98 AMU. So then if we do a factor label method, 20, whoops, 75 aluminum atoms and we now know that one aluminum atom is 26.98 AMU, we get for the aluminum that 75 aluminum atoms would be 2,024 AMU. And if we wanted to convert that to grams, we would just multiply that by the, uh, the number of grams at 1 AMU, which was 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. And that would give us the answer in grams.